Hey guys, welcome back. This is Brian from the B10HD, and today is all about MDT build 8443 and deploying nano server within your infrastructure. So let's get started. Now you need to get a couple of files, and I'm going to place the link at the bottom of the video so you guys can grab the files. Uh, one particular, it's a zip folder, and that zip folder contains some a script folder templates and tools which I'm going to show you what you need to do with these three particular folders and we need to download and install the nano server image builder because we need to create our nano WIM image to deploy it within our MDT server to deploy it out so what we need to do within the script folder we need to actually uh, replace this because the ZIT configures already within our deployment share folder and then drop in the LTI offline join VB script so what we're going to do is get inside our deployment share and we're going to go to the C drive we're going to put this to the side so we need to get into our deployment share scripts folder and I'm going to locate the ZTI config first and the only reason why I'm going to locate that because I want to back that up first before I, I replace it so take your original one I'm going to right click on it rename it and we are going to put a dash old okay and then we're going to take these two and we're going to drop it inside that folder okay so if anything happens I have a backup of that ZTI config file okay next thing that we need to do is get inside our tools and within tools because we're deploying nano server nano server works on a 64-bit infrastructure so we have to deploy it within I tools x64 folder so we need to go inside our deployment share tools 64 and we are going to drop this uh, Microsoft BDD file inside there now the last thing that we need to do is templates now templates is basically within the root of your C drive It's not within your deployment share so let's go inside your C drive we're going to go to program files and within there your Microsoft deployment toolkit and templates and we're going to just highlight all this and we're going to drag it and drop it in here okay once you do all that we're going to close all the folders and I'm going to actually close my deployment workbench okay and we're going to restart it again awesome cool 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 great so I'm going to minimize this and the next thing that we need to do is install our nano server image builder so I'm going to double click on this file I'm going to click on next I'm going to accept the license agreement, click next. Uh, I'm going to leave the default path for now, click next, and install. Installation is pretty quick, which is awesome, and we're going to click finish. Then we're going to click on start, and we need to locate our nano server image builder. So I'm going to right click on this, I'm going to go to more, and I'm going to actually pin it to the taskbar and I'm gonna click on it to load it up. Okay, from here you get a nice little dialog box, a wizard. Uh, what we need to do is create a new nano server image. So let's click on that. You're gonna read all the instructions. I'm going to click next on this. And now it says select a location for your Windows Server media source. So we are going to click on browse and then we need to locate our Windows Server DVD or ISO. Now. I'm going to cancel this for now because I'm doing everything in within a virtual machine so that means I need to go into my VM settings and within settings let's click on to my CD we're gonna click on browse and within browse there goes my 2016 so I'm just making sure that that 2016 uh, server ISO is mounted inside my virtual machine which it is I'm gonna double check on it so I'm gonna click on file explorer and there it goes awesome so now I'm gonna click on browse again and I'm going to go to this PC and it's located inside my D Drive and we're gonna click OK and we're gonna click on next and review the license and terms real easy click on next on that okay from here we have two types we have virtual machine image and physical machine image if you pick virtual machine image it's going to create either a uh, VHD or a VHDX uh, container for your Hyper-V infrastructure or if you pick physical machine image which I'm going to do uh, it's going to create a WIM image so I could deploy it within our MDT server now before I do anything let's go inside my Fire Explorer 
and I'm going to double click on my C drive and going to create a folder called images. We're going to click on browse and we're going to go inside our C drive and we're going to go to images and within images I'm going to call it btnhd.wim and then we're going to click save and then from here we're going to click on next now for this option right here there's not really anything for me to configure so I'm just going to click next uh, for the basic configuration, first step, specify the basic information for your image, know your network configuration, know the name and target server, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to click on next on that. Uh, right now, it's going to go inside the ISO and locate any optional packages that you want to insert within your Nano WIM image. So that's what's happening right now. Now, once it loads up, you get a bunch of optional packages. This is really up to you and how you want to configure your Nano server. Uh, by default, you're going to get the server core drivers, so leave that alone. I'm going to pick uh, Windows PowerShell, Virtual Machine Deployment, and I'm going to do a little bit of Hyper-V. Why not, right? Uh, and then from there, I'm going to uh, click Next. Now, if you're deploying this WIM image into a physical machine, such as like a Dell R720 or a 1950 or whatever, uh, and it needs specific drivers for it to be installed correctly, just insert them here. Because I'm deploying it within a, you know, virtual machine environment I don't really need to insert any drivers so I'm going to click next now you can enter computer name uh, which I'm not going to enter anything but definitely going to add an admin password and make sure you jot down the admin password awesome uh, set your time zone Eastern time is my time zone let's click on next from here you can actually configure your WIM image to join to your domain I'm not gonna do that right now so I'm gonna click next now to set up your network it really depends on your infrastructure for me I am going to enable DHCP to attain an IP address automatically so then click next now for advanced configuration you have two options you can either create a basic nano server image or continue to configure advanced settings I'm gonna keep it super simple for this video and just do create basic nano server image click on that and it gives you a rundown of what's gonna happen and we're going to uh, click on create this process takes a while so go get a cup of coffee and then once this is done we're going to continue all right guys so it looks like the process has completed it even gives you a nice little option to create a usb which is pretty cool uh, we're not going to do the create usb portion because uh, we're actually taking our WIM image and deploying it within our MDT. Okay, so it's time for us to deploy our WIM image, our nano WIM image within our MDT. So I'm gonna go inside our Fire Explorer, C drive, and images, and there goes our WIM image. It's pretty small too. Okay, so what we're gonna do is import our nano WIM image. So let's open up our uh, MDT workbench and we're going to expand our operating system node. So I'm gonna create a folder. As you guys know, I love creating folders to keep myself nice and organized. So I'm going to call it nano server, hit next and next and uh, finish, okay? We're going to right click on the folder and import an operating system. We're not doing a full set of source files uh, because again, this is a custom image. So we're gonna do a custom image file, click on next. We're gonna browse and we need to locate that uh, nano server WIM image that we did together using the nano server image builder so let's go inside this pc c drive images let's click on that open and then from here we're going to click on next so i'm going to leave the default as setup files are not needed let's click on next uh destination will be this cool nice little summary and click on next and the operation is super fast because the WIM image is so small it's a small container it's not that big click on finish Let's click on our nano server folder, double click on this, and look all that goodness, look all that information. How awesome is that? So we're going to click OK, and we're going to go and create a task sequence. I'm going to right click on my task sequence node, go to new, and as you know, I love creating folders. So we're gonna. this is going to be nano server x64, and click next, and finish. I'm going to right click on it, go to new task sequence. Let's give this a task sequence of, let's say, nano 01. And this is going to be nano server x64 version 1.0. TS for task sequence. And click on next. This is going to be a not a standard client task sequence. Remember, we took a bunch of template files and we replaced them or we placed them inside our uh, Microsoft deployment toolkit. 
And this is what it, that gave us. It gave us a nano server task sequence, and it gave us a nano server VHD boot task sequence. Now, the one that we're doing is the this task sequence, nano server task sequence, which is the same thing as a standard client, but it's only going to work for the nano server. So we're going to click next. And we need to pick our operating system and we're going to pick the one that we created which would be the custom nano server click on x i'm not going to specify a product key for now click on x uh enter all this information so it's going to be btnhd okay uh click on x provide an admin password awesome i don't really think you need to do this but uh let's click on x a nice little summary click next and it should be done and click finish okay so we have our nano server task sequence up and running uh so we're going to double click on it and let's go to task sequence and see what's new Ooh, look at the goodies uh very short and simple it's not it doesn't look like uh one of the standard client ones uh it looks like it's just straight to the point it checks whether you're doing a bios or uefi formats it partitions it it does a little offline join Remember that file that we placed inside the script folder? It imports drivers if you have any drivers to import inside the nano server. It applies patches, it configures, it goes to the next phase, installs the operating system. It's pretty self explanatory. So let's uh, click OK. We're going to right click on our deployment share. We're going to update our deployment share. We're going to click on next. Next again. We're going to let that do its thing. It's real quick. Finish. And what I'm going to do is. Go inside my WDS because I'm going to be pushing it out with my WDS. And within my WDS, I'm going to right click on this guy and I'm going to replace this image with something new. So let's go to C drive, deployment share, boot 64, click next, next, next. Nice, nice little refresh. I'm just going to replace what I have so far. Uh, I don't, you really don't need to do this. I like to do this a lot just to make sure that my boot images are fresh uh, and you know my infrastructure has the latest and greatest boot image so when it deploys I have no problem uh, once this is done we're gonna click on finish another thing that I like to do is right click on it and go to all tasks and just restart the WDS to make sure it's nice and healthy and it's healthy awesome and what we're gonna do is within the host because again I'm doing everything as a virtual environment I'm going to go into my host go into uh, F drive gonna go to new BJ nano server and we're going to create a new virtual machine and we're gonna push our task sequence so we're gonna go to file new virtual machine next next this is somewhat like server 2016 click next I want to drop it inside that path and the VM name is going to be this excellent click next I'm gonna leave it at 60 gigs click next next awesome so I'm going to power this virtual machine up and I'm gonna click F12 like a madman see if we we'll get into the boot awesome awesome I'm gonna close this up so we are going to hit enter on that it's gonna load up if everything goes well we should see our task sequence, our nano server task sequence, we're going to pick it and we're going to deploy it and we're going to see how it looks. Okay, it looks like our uh, deployment wizard has started. I haven't really configured my custom settings INI file to skip this and, you know, log into the deployment share as of yet because this is a fresh uh, 8443 build that I did with you guys a while back. So I, what I'm going to do is click run deployment wizard to install the operating system. And it's going to want me to enter the credentials. Now, this part right here is you have to establish the connection to your deployment share. And make sure whatever account that you're entering here has full admin rights to read and write within your deployment share. And the one I'm using is the administrator account. Click OK. If everything goes well, you should get this and it should go through with no problem. Great. There it goes. There goes our task sequence, our nano server, the one that we created together. So I'm going to pick it. We're going to click next. Uh, give it a name if you want. Let's go to BJ uh, Nano. That's what we gave the virtual machine. Uh, join a work group. I'm not joining a domain for now. Click on next. And let's change the time zone to Eastern time. Good. We're going to click on next. Uh, 
nice little details and we're gonna begin all right guys so our deployment was successful but we received one error and the error was the LTI offline join I need to do some research on this and see why I received that error but it looks like it deployed hmm so I'm going to click finish and it's gonna reboot and we're gonna see how far it got uh, I might have to do a little research to see why the ZTI offline join uh, did not work correctly. It's one of those things. I have to just do some research to see what's going on. But I want to. I would like to know if the nano server did deploy, and that was the only problem that we received. Oh, look, it did. Yeah, awesome, cool, 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 cool. So it looked like it deployed, and it needs the username and password and domain. Now this is going to be a little tricky. So let's do administrator. And then we're going to add the password. And for the domain, let's try work group. Awesome. Woo! So it looks like our BJ Dash Nano server is up and running. The only problem that I had was the uh, ZTI offline join file that we placed within the script folder, which I need to do a little research to see what's the deal with that. Other than that, guys, that is how we configure our MDT server. Remember, I'm using build 8443 to deploy a nano server. If you have any comments or concerns, leave them at the bottom. Don't forget about hitting that like button. I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.